All right, David Taylor, welcome back to the podcast, my friend. Yeah, it's good to be back. We've had to reschedule a couple of times, but yes, I'm glad sir. we finally got it on the books. You're so busy. Dude, I know. I, I appreciate you uh, you dealing with me, and uh, um, it's good to get you back on. And it's like, dude, you're a recurring guest, 100%. And it's a good time right now, man. It's like this time of year, season's upon us. Iron Man's coming up. Um, you know, you're back at training. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on the, the current state of some of the wrestling things going on right now, whether it's college, your club, your tra- yourself training? All good. Yeah. I was, uh, I was at my club last night and you know, their season, you know, they, their official season just started. So they're starting their practices. And I mean, just in talking to them about that, I started getting goosebumps, you know, because I know how much time they put into it. Um, you know, and they're excited. Their season's getting started, whether they're a freshman or they're a senior or whatever, anything in between or first day of practice. But um, and that's across the board, right? Tonight we got the all-star match here at Rec Hall. Um, I'm actually doing the commentating for that, so that will be fun. And then uh that's awesome. Didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, that will that will be a lot of fun, a lot of good matches. Obviously, you've got um a lot of Penn State guys wrestling, which would be great. And college wrestling's underway, you know. Um, I did the first commentating event for the you know the CFFC partnership with the UFC Fight Pass. That was actually a great duel. Campbell has a good team. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, they were and they were really good on top. That was my biggest takeaway after there is I'm like, man, these dudes, they spend some time on top. That young kid, that 157, I think. I think he just had another big win um, at Wyoming. Um, he's, I think he's Ohio kid. I can't remember his name now off the top of my head, but he's scrappy. So they're doing a good job. That was fun. Um, now I'm a Campbell fan. So I'm following yeah. their program now uh, more closely, which is cool. Sky Sintess and Wim Hollick are doing a really good job down there. It's cool uh, to see a program that started from like before Colat got there. I'd never even heard of him really. And then now it's like this, this cult following almost and wrestling around Campbell. And it's awesome to see that it's kept going, you know? Yeah. I mean, their following at that event was strong, like very strong. Like their social media department was into it. Yeah. Um, which is cool to see that, you know, people are saying like, man, NIL is destroying college wrestling. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, but there's still, uh, I mean, look at Campbell, right. I mean, right now, I mean, they, they have a good team. Like they're investing a lot of time and resources into that team. They're recruiting well, they're spending time with their kids. Um, and it was fun to watch. They had a really fun team, you know, not people that you don't know those kids, like off the top of your head, like you're not gonna be like, Oh, I identify all those guys. Um, but they're going to be in the mix in the NCAA tournament. A lot of those kids are, you know, and if they can stay healthy. So uh, I think that, that promotion's doing a great job, man. Yeah. Well, so what is, give us a little background on that. So a lot of people are saying it's on UFC fight pass. Like what, what's the, like, what's going on with that? How'd well, you get it, Yeah. So uh, my agency, Iridium is one of the biggest MMA agencies, if not the biggest MMA agency. So they can, they kind of helped open that door with UFC fight pass. And I've been meeting with UFC Fight Pass for last year and about, hey, when wrestling, you know, gets started, you know, like they, we want you involved. You know, we, we don't not really sure how we're going to do it, but we want you involved. Um, so this has kind of been time, you know, waiting. And then last year they did, I think just that one duel. Um, it was Michigan and North Carolina and Campbell, maybe someone else. It was like three or four teams that wrestled. And I think that was it. Uh, and then this year they've expanded. I think they had 10 duels. Um, and it's cool. Every, so every location is in a cool location. So like when we first did the very first one, um, was in the airplane hangar down on the, uh, on the army base. Then this past weekend, um, the, the Wyoming wrestled Campbell and they were in a barn, like a really cool, like atmosphere. And so they're kind of tying in these different themes, these like kind of boutique environments with these teams. And the David Carr high school one also that or different organization. Yeah. yeah, David Carr, your same thing. So David Carr just wrestled. uh, They were twice. They wrestled. uh, David Carr wrestled at home against Cleveland state. So Iowa state, Cleveland state in his home gym. And then Iowa state just wrestled Wisconsin also on that same card, I believe. Right. Was that Iowa state? I didn't know. I knew, I thought for sure. Cause that was kind of the first one I saw. I missed, I must've missed the one of the ship, but it's, and it's, um, yeah, you look at it, you're like, all right, Iowa state Cleveland state. You're like, yeah, I'm maybe not normally going to watch that, but what they're doing with it, the way they make it, you know, theme, right. It's in David Carr's high school gym. There's a lot of energy there, but also the production quality is like off the charts. I mean, there's multiple cameras, the audio is off, just everything is top notch. 
So you partnered. So they had UFC Fight Pass, and they partnered with the CFFC. So CFFC is a big regional promotion, like in the Northeast. So like they have a lot of shows in like the Philadelphia, New Jersey area, and in Florida. Okay. Um, that guy that kind of runs that organization, Matchmaker. Um, you know, he's a big wrestling guy. Wrestled before. Um, so they're like, okay, we'll, you know, but the combination you have the fight, the UFC Fight Pass resources with you know the CFF CFFC promotion and kind of like teaming together. Yeah. And if you look at UFC Fight Pass, they're like, okay, wow, wrestling's the best discipline. Wrestling wins in MMA. All these MMA fans from across the world, they can follow all these Fight Pass and Invitationals and Jiu-Jitsu and, you know, uh, MMA fights. But they don't know a lot about wrestling. They just see these wrestlers coming in and they're killers. Like, where are these guys coming from? So mm-hmm. now Fight Pass now have all this content of these guys. And if they go into the UFC, now, now they're going to have this content that they can market them. Um, and that's kind of what went from one dual meets. Now they're at, you know, I think 10 dual meets this year. And, you know, you're going to see like the Campbell heavyweight, for example, he says that he wants to fight, you know, and maybe kid people don't necessarily know him in NCAA wrestling, but you don't have to be the best NCAA wrestler to become a great fighter. You know, the kid's super athletic, very gifted, well put together. You know, if he decides and he goes on a run and he wins a couple of regional fights and gets signed by the UFC. Now they got this, this him of him just pinning these guys back mm-hmm. in the day. You know, so I think for them, it's an investment into wrestling uh, yeah. for the long term approach. You know, you identify the superstars, David Carr, uh, Hamidi, um, Keegan O'Toole. Man, if those guys go into fighting and they got four or five or six or dual meets of these guys competing, that's great content for them. But they can build these guys. So it's great for wrestling to get on that exposure. Um, it's great for these kids to have another avenue of exposure as well. And it just starts to kind of align those stars for these kids that, you know, obviously MMA is a, we've had a lot of success as wrestlers going into that, into that, that vertical. So, yeah. Um, it's crazy it's because cool. and they, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was go ahead. I was just going to say like UFC fight pass has a lot of jujitsu on there. I'm sorry, but wrestling is way more entertaining than watching jujitsu. Like it's like, there's a, there's a good product, you know, and especially a dual meet. And I'm not bashing jujitsu. I really like it, but I'm sorry. It's wrestling's just way more entertaining if you know what's going on. Well, it's, I feel like you go back and forth, right? I think, but you, if you don't know anything about jujitsu, you're like, what are these guys doing? Right. right. If you understand jujitsu, you're like, wow, watching Gordon Ryan do what he does and submit a guy with the exact move that he says he's going to submit somebody at the exact same time he's going to submit somebody. That's like pretty amazing. All right. That's, you pretty, know? yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but if you, um, you know, if you don't know anything about wrestling, it's maybe a little bit confusing or vice versa, but both are big. Both are, you know, big part of becoming an mm-hmm. MMA prospect on the road. Yeah. So I think it's great that they're thinking about wrestling, you know, and then now expanding that over 10 dual meets. Um, originally, they wanted me to announce every dual meet, which was great, but I just don't have the ability to do that. So yeah. I kicked off the first one, um, which was cool. We had, you know, Campbell and Army and then um, NC State and Presbyterian. And then I'm doing the one in December. It's uh, Illinois, Missouri. So that oh, was nice. those are the two, that, uh, and that's in Missouri. Um, kind of like a somewhat of a home dual meet for Missouri, but I don't think it's it's not on the campus. So those are two two dual meets that I'll be doing the commentating for. Um, but it's fun, and you know, just developing more relationships, you know, um, and getting more experience commentating mm-hmm. and. Uh, which is, you know, something that I enjoy doing. And bro, you're like uh, the Romo of commentating. You're great. And like the way you can break it down like that, like that's why I love Romo is that, and I, I wish like Peyton Manning did it too, because like what they see is so much more detailed than what we see. And it's fun to have that perspective. And the way you talk about it and the way you're analytical reminds me of that. And like, it's, it gives like a real insider breakdown to what's going on. And I think that's why people love John Smith at the Olympics. He does the same, but you're very good at it. I, I, I like that you uh, break it down like that. I appreciate that a lot. Um, it's a different thing. You, you're tapping into a different part of your brain because, you know, like what I see real time, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, what I'm seeing real time, but also, you know, you're trying to break it down to, I, I what I try to do is I see it real time and I try and break it down like, okay, well, what are both wrestlers kind of thinking about in this moment, right? Or maybe educating like, or what they should be thinking about. Maybe they're not thinking about these things in this situation, timing of scores. Um, It's hard when they get in scrambles, you know, because I'm like, "Uh, watch your knees. Like, I hate those scrambles, you know? Um, I gotta get a little bit better at uh, explaining those ones, but 
Um, but overall, yeah, I think it's, it's a fun thing. You know, I enjoy, obviously really passionate about wrestling and giving a little it's bit hard though. Into, yeah, I, I, it's hard. I, I've, I've done it once or twice. I have, I don't, I don't want to do it again. It's just like, you got to know so much about the guys, but also the positions and like, I'm deep on neither. Right. And it's like, wow, some of those guys, you listen to them talk. It's like, they know so much about these guys, high school careers. It's just amazing how deep some people are into it, you know? And yeah, it's, so it, it's cool that you're doing that. And I also love though, like just following your content and your channel. It's like what you've been talking about just from listening to your first two podcasts with your, with your cameraman are you're going back into this next nine months towards Paris with a new chip on your shoulder. And that, you kind of thought last year, maybe you were just going through the motions a little too long. Could you expound on that a little bit? Cause that got me fired up. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, well, so we just started a new YouTube channel. Um, you know, obviously you, you've been influential in trying to get me to do it and, yeah, uh, need to, I'm so glad, it, man. It's fun. You know, it's like, I, I feel like Instagram is, it's great, you know, but it's such a short period of time, you know, it's like a highlight reel of what you do. And it's, it's hard to portray much more than that. Um, but YouTube trying to give more in depth into what's going on, you know, what's going on in my life. You know, if I'm traveling like this past week, I was out in LA for the universal shoot. It's like only 60 athletes got invited from team USA, um, over spread over five days. So 12 athletes per day. And, you know, we're going to be the athletes that are going to be promoting into the games into Paris. Wow. So what do you do out there? Huge honor. Well, I got a YouTube video coming out. You can check it Hell out. Yeah. Um, but that's the kind of stuff like on it, you know, like you, you do like a little reel or a couple pictures, but now you kind of get an idea. Like we were at, you know, stations, five stations, 40 minutes of station. It's pictures, videos, interviews, boom, boom, boom. Every media outlet that's covering, you know, Peacock, NBC sports, team USA. Um, every, everyone's going to be covering the games. Like now they have that content, you know, and if I do what I'm supposed to do and I make the team, now they're going to have that going into the games, you know? And it's a, it's a tough thing for them because they got to pick people they think are going to go to the games and do well. You know, because if not, then it's not, it's not, a, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so it's an honor to be there, you know, and I'm glad, you know, like I think, and to kind of go back to your, what you said, you know, yeah, there's an expectation on me this year to do well, but it's the same expectation that I have of myself. Like I'm not going into this year, hoping to make a team or hoping to win a medal. Like I'm a proven performer and my goal is to win gold. There's no other option in my mind, you know, and in this past couple of years, I think since getting over the Olympics in, in 2021 and or whatever, 20, yeah, 2020, but 2021 and having that short turnaround to the world championships, you know, how I trained and what I did going into that, that time frame it just wasn't sustainable for me anymore. You know, I have other interests. I have a family, you know, we are ever other aspects of our lives that that take precedent over wrestling, you know, wrestling is a, was everything I did. And it's now one of the things that I do. Don't take that as it's not important to me anymore because it's as important as it's ever been. It just couldn't be my entire life anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that transit transition period over the last couple of years was like, how does, how does something that would every decision I basically made for so long, how do you replace that? but still keep the same hunger and excitement to compete at a high level. So the last couple of years has been like a trial and error a little bit of like, all right, well, can I do it and do it differently? You know? Um, and then there's that element of confidence in your head. Well, can I still have the same output that I had if I'm not training the way that I was training or if I'm balancing a lot more things. And uh, uh, so I think refining that process, you know, what I did in 2022, I might change a little bit for 2023, but in 2023, my goal was, you know, after coming back from the Olymp the world championships, um, I kind of jumped right back into training. And you know, I talked about this and I think in my podcast that I maybe one of the, what I did already. And then I just sort of was going through the motions for a while, you know, just like, all right, I'm going to, I'm just going to be in shape and then I'm going to turn it up. And mm -hmm. as I get closer, Oh, well, the longer I kind of just was training without, with a min and purpose of training, when it's time to turn it up, it was hard. It was really hard. I felt like I didn't have enough time, you know, going into the trials. I felt like I didn't have enough time. And then from People the trials, say that, right? Like you're not just going to be able to like turn it up when you get to a competition. Like that's like, you've heard that since we've been in elementary, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think it's a little different, you know, like, I mean, I'm not like I'm, yeah. you know, like I'm going to practice and I'm, I, you know, not trying, you know, um, 
But there's a way different thing in going in and wrestling and training, you know, wrestling, you're, you know, okay, well, every time a guy gets to leg, you're not focusing on sprawling, you know, you're going to scramble around, you know, it's like, okay, well, you're willing to concede a little bit of a position because you're helping your partner. When you're training, there's really no room for that. You know, when you're training to be the 1% of the 1%, and when you're trying to be world champion, Olympic champion, everything has to be on point. You know, it's like you have to be dialed in mentally to fight in those positions, a different conditioning level. To wrestle the way I want to compete, it's a different conditioning level. And I have to do that in practice. I have to push myself like that to tap into that type of because it's 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 a little bit of insanity, you know. Because like the way I wrestle is it's a it's exhaustion and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to do that every day in practice anymore, you know. <laughs> um, but I know that I have to do that to wrestle that way. Um, and that's what I kind of waited a little too long to do. Mm. Where this year I took time off after the worlds, and now when I'm in there now, I'm I'm in that I'm in that mentality. I I know what, what this year looks like for me you know, getting ready for April and, uh, having a little bit different periodization, but you know, when, when I'm in there wrestling, I'm training, you know, and, uh, that way when I'm in there, I'm hundred percent focused. And that was a good learning lesson last year. And, uh, you know, I think it's just only going to help me perform better this year. Um, you know, going into Paris. Well, it's cool because like, I, I even wrote it down just as a reminder for like anyone or any walk of life. It's like when you're going into the office that day or going into whatever, instead of just like going through the motions, like you're kind of thinking about it, like you're going in with a purpose, like you're going in to get better with these specific things. And it's like obvious when we're younger in our career, but once you've reached a plateau and you, you've kind of hit your stride a little bit, then it's easy to forget that. But you're, I love that you're just going in every day with that, that, that razor mindset of getting better. Yeah. I mean, I think just, you know, I know that right now, if I just go, Hey, I'm all in, I'm training. Well, in six weeks, I'm going to be ready to run through a brick wall and wrestle at the Olympics. Well, the Olympics aren't for another seven months. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, you're going to train at that level and get these tiny little marginal, you know, and that's just where the experience of doing this over a period of time, you know, it's like, okay, my, my, my ramp up is April for Olympic trials. You know, that to me really, the Olympic trials is really my Olympics. Yeah. You know, it really is like, you know, making, making the team, you know, beating the guys I'm off the beat to make the team. Uh, you know, that's, that's as difficult as the Olympics, you know, and I know that it's not a, you know, earlier in my career, it's like, okay, well, you're, you're really preparing for the the, the world championships, or the Olympics, and this is part of that process. You know, for me, it's, that's the process. And then it's then get ready for the Olympics, you know, cause I've been there. I've competed against every single person. I know exactly what to expect from them. Um, and in my mind, I know exactly what it's going to take to win. Um, so you just got to make sure April is a priority, you know, and, and that's just where my mindset is. How do you track your progress over a six month period when you're not going to be in a lot of competitions, if any, before then? My room is really good. Yeah. Um, you know, any given day, like if I really want to see where I'm at, grab Kyle Snyder, you know, I grab Kyle Dake, you know, <laughs> um, and you know, real quick, you know, like where, where, at, where, where's your conditioning level? Okay. Well, this is a day I'm going to really push it and I'm going to challenge these guys and, and see, you know, where I'm at. And I, there's not, it's not an everyday thing for me anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but then when those times are, okay, let's see, let's go, you know, and they know the same, you know, and I think it's a way that, and I, those are just two examples. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, you say 86 kilos, we have in our room, 86 kilos, we have four, four metal contenders in Paris right? Just in our room. That's crazy. Um, you know, and when you talk about the United States, I mean, we got probably five or six, you know, um, but the majority of them are just in our room. So that's my own weight class. And then, but we have that at multiple weight classes above and below. Mm-hmm. So that's how, you know, um, wow, that's how that's you know cool. where you're at. Yeah. Pretty easy to put it that way. I mean, like that's such a, yeah. that speaks to just that environment in that room. It's un- unbelievable. And it's like, when you think about how deep it is, it's it's only getting deeper. Like some of these young guys coming in, like watching uh watching Mitchell Messenbrink or watching, you know, Levi at uh just two weeks ago at the open was fun. So yeah, it's it's exciting, man. Yeah, speaking of that, 
the U S open this year is going to be pretty fun to watch in December. Um, and I just think about the trials, you know, I'm in it this year, you know, obviously, so I need to be focused, but just from a fan perspective, you know, if you don't have tickets to watch the Bryce Jordan center Olympic trials in April, you're missing out on probably the best wrestling event we're going to see in the history of our sport. I really believe that because you have these generational guys, right? You have these generational guys wrestling longer than what they probably ever, anyone ever thought we'd be wrestling at. Um, and still at a very high level. And then you have all of the current guys, you have the next generation of guys and you have the young kids. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these matches from, I mean, there, there's not going to be a match where you're like, Oh, that's an easy 10 0 tech fall. Like there might be a couple in the whole tournament. Right. I mean, there could be battling. I mean, every, every match, I mean, from a, from a fan standpoint, it's going to be pretty unbelievable, you know? So I'm, I'm, it's going to be a fun event to be at. I, I, I expect rec hall to be electric. I mean, there's going to be just, just so much current and former Penn state Nittany lions that are going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be conflicted, you know, it's going to be electric. Uh, I mean, you're going to yeah, have house divided, right? I mean, so many, uh, so many Penn state guys, it's funny. I, I'm with my my brothers in the other room, and whenever we go to wrestling tournaments together, we go together. And I'm known for getting like I'm ch cheaping out in the hotel. Like I'll get a hotel with just one bed, and we'll have to share it, or like like not even like like a pullout or something. And so we're just looking for NCAA's in March. Got a hotel room with two beds, but for Penn State, we got one downtown, and it's a it's a single bed. But like fact is, hotels booked. Can't wait for that tournament, man. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's, it's gonna uh... be. God, and then like you think about, you know, it's really what you just said there about generational guys are still going. Um, yeah, you know, I just had Logan Steve on the podcast yesterday, and you know he's right around that same time, right? And he was telling some really fun stories about you that I wanted to ask you about. But he's like, um, yeah, he's another guy where he could easily be still in the mix right now, you know. And so it's crazy. He was telling me a story about you guys were at Fargo camp cadets. His plan, Jamie Clark was going 91. His plan was to cut to 98 and you were going to go to 105. And he basically said, I can't make it. I'm going to go 105 and you decide to go down to 98. And all three of you guys won Fargo. Yeah. I mean, Logan and I, we we grew up doing everything together. Um, I mean, we we were at the, we we wrestled each other when we were eight for the very first time, Tulsa Nationals for true second. Um, because Andrew Alton beat both of us. Um, Andrew Alton headlocked me in the semis. Um, I came back one for got third. He beat he beat Logan in the finals, and then I wrestled Logan for true second. That was the first time. And then just like any crazy dads, uh, Mr. Steber and my dad are like, these guys got to wrestle each other. Okay, let's go. So we used to when I was a kid, I lived in Wyoming still at the time. We used to go to Ohio. So it was Logan Steber, Colin Palmer, myself. Uh, there was a family, the Adamson family, um, and I'm missing out on obviously a lot of other people, but uh, Lance Palmer. But basically what happened is now it's like, okay, well, we just got together like three times a year and dad's called it the headbangers ball. And basically every kid was crying at different times. And it was just in these insane workouts. And we would just wrestle for like, I don't even remember. I, I look back and I feel like we wrestled five times a day over three days and then flew home. And nobody could win every practice because it was so hard. Um, and we're kids, you know, yeah. you can't control your emotions. Um, but Logan and I were always the smallest in those groups, you know? And uh, then as we went, we just were always one weight class apart everywhere we went. And then, uh, yeah, going into that year, I would, I, in training camp, I, I decided I had to go down to 98. Um, and yeah, we all won. And Jamie, people don't know Jamie Clark, but Jamie Clark beat me in high school. And to this day, Jamie was probably of all the opponents that I had to wrestle, you know, my life. He was one guy going to every single match. I'm like, I don't really know how I'm going to beat this guy. I'm just going to have to try to find a way to beat him because I, I couldn't know ride. this name. Then, like, I I need to know this name, and I'm going to get him on the podcast because people yeah. are like talking about dude like a legend. He was so good. He was so disciplined. Like his position at that age, like his positioning was unbelievable. Like you kind of would me elbow pass you instantly. He was so disciplined in his stance. And at that point in my life, I was not, 
I was really good on top. Like that was by far my best position. Like well, my best matches in high school, I won on top by far. I could reverse everybody. So that was where I had a ton of experience. Um, on my feet, you know, I had a few things I did, but I wasn't nearly as confident. When I wrestled good guys like Logan or Jamie Clark, I'm like, I just got to find a way to get a single takedown and I can win this match. But I know if we get on the mat, I can ride and turn and I can get off the bottom. But with Jamie, I couldn't ride him. Like he had this good little like system where I just couldn't ride him. And uh, I beat him the first time I beat him was at St. Ed's and it was zero, zero. He got off the bottom. He was winning one, zero. I go down in third. And I remember it's the only time I ever thought this. I'm like, I can't get away right away because then I'm gonna have to probably take him down and hold him down. And I don't know. And maybe if we go to overtime, I want to take him down once. So maybe that was what I'll do. <laughs> and I don't know. Like, yeah, seriously. And then it got too late in the match where it's like 50 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. I hadn't got off the bottom with about 15 seconds. I stood up. I took his hands. I made him lock his hands. I put my hand on the mat. I looked at the referee. I got a locked hands call and I got an escape at the same time. And I won two to one. Whoa. Yeah, it was wild. Uh, then we wrestle in a dual meet at, cause he went to St. Ed's. So my high school and St. Ed's were obviously very big, uh, rivals. Then we go to St. Ed's and we wrestle at my home gym and he took me down four times in that match. I lost, uh, eight to six in overtime, but he had three takedowns in the match and I had escapes and one takedown. However, that worked out. And then they took me down overtime. Um, so I got taken out four times in that one match. Is that your and, only high school uh, loss? I lost twice. I lost to Ben Surgent, um, my very first high school tournament as a freshman. And I lost to Jamie as a sophomore. Jamie was a sophomore. I remember yeah. the Ben Surgent loss. Where, where was that at? That was also in my home gym. My only two losses were in my home gym. We had the Graham Invitational. So I, I didn't win the Graham Invitational my freshman year. I won the Ironman two weeks later, but I didn't win the Graham Invitational. Dude, Steve um, was talking about the Iron Man. He's I didn't realize that was a like your guys' 103 bracket. Who was all in that? That was crazy. Yeah, so he so Logan beat Jamie in the semis, um, in like a six five heater. And then I beat Logan in the finals that year. Well, and how did that match go? Um, so he took me down right off the bat. Um, I got a quick escape slide by, and then I rode him. He went down. I turned him. Then I went, then, uh, you know, uh, that was pretty much the difference. So wait, so what it went, he took me down. I got escape slide by. So I went three, two, I went down, got the escape four two. He went down in the third period. Um, and I, I returned him and that was the difference wow. in that. Yeah. So six, three, wow. I think, man, but that's still, yeah. I, so I wrestled. Like I my love finals about it because we were right in that season of folk style now. It's like, dude, that that Ironman term, it's like December's here. It's like Christmas right on the corner. And it's like some real, real deep matches there. I love that tournament. I had some crazy matches there. So my so my freshman year, I wrestled Ben Surgent at the Grand Invitational and lost. And he would he had won Fargo the year before. He was really good. Um dude, Ohio was and, so deep at this time. Yeah, we were all because we all trained together. We we're all in the same clubs. We all were at the same time, like overlapping. There was another kid named Sammy White, who I never wrestled, but was also a stud. Um, so were you going to all, Burnett's too? Sammy was Burnett. So Sammy, Logan, Jamie, they were all Burnett guys. Um, Surgent was from Troy Christian, which so he kind of grew up in the same club that I did. So Jordan Train Club. And uh, yeah, but we all got together and wrestled all the time, you know? And uh, I mean, it was just one guy. One guy would win one weekend, one guy would win another weekend type type thing. Um, my freshman year, so I wrestled Ben in the so Ben beat me the next weekend. I wrestled him in the semis, and uh, he was I was losing. I think I took him down to his back in the semis to win with like maybe a minute left. Then I beat Boris Novotchkov in the finals. Then my sophomore year, I beat Logan in the finals. My junior year, I beat Jamie Clark in the finals, and then my senior year, um, I don't know, beat a guy from Pennsylvania in the finals, but. Yeah, it was a tough tournament. The freshman. So Logan was your sophomore year. Sophomore, yeah. So I was a sophomore. He was a freshman. I was one year. Did you ever wrestle Boris before that? No. He was a junior at 103. I weighed like 95 pounds. So, Thank you, bro. Just, yeah. But wow. it was fun. It was, it was a good, 
The craziest match I had at Ironman by far, though, was my senior year. So I was going for my fourth Ironman title. Nobody had done that. Nobody had won four before. And, and I went from 112 to 135. So I'd made a huge weight jump. And I don't know how the brackets worked out, but I wrestled Ian Miller's second match. And uh, we were like the number two, one or two guys in the state that year. And Ian was, he was tough and he was very like, he had big moves. I got a takedown right off the bat. Then I got thrown to my back. And uh, like Iron Man, they, they already printed me a jacket that said I was going to win like four time Iron Man champion, you know, because they were going to present it to me. So I get thrown to my back. And I remember just like ev now everyone's like around the mat. And in Ohio, if a match is close and you're on top, you're getting hit for stalling 100% of the time. Like without a, and like, I mean, I was good on top. So whatever had happened, I got the takedown. I tied it up with 40 seconds left, minute left in the match, whatever it was, six, six, eight, eight, whatever it was. So it was something high scoring like that. And they hit me for stalling with a minute left on top. And Ian wasn't really trying to get off the bottom, but I'm like, I remember looking at coach. I'm like, I'm going to have to cut them because they're going to hit me for stalling again. So I cut them with like 30 seconds left. And then I took him down to his back to win that match. So I cut him to go be down by one. And I was like second, second round of that tournament. Who was seeing that, that bracket? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I don't remember what. Crazy. I don't know if Ian had the credentials to be seated very high um, okay. at that point in time. Um, but that was a crazy match. Oh, yeah, damn. It's funny how you say if you're in Ohio, you're on top, you're gonna get hit for stalling. Because out in PA in high school, I'm sure they wouldn't even. Oh, it's so different. Like you know, as a kid, you know that's why a lot of these Ohio kids struggle on the mat in college because in Ohio, it's just like they just call you for stalling. Like if you're on top, it's close, it's stall. If you're on your feet and you're winning by a point, stalling. Like it's just. It's like I don't know why. In Pennsylvania, at PJWs, man, you you can you can do whatever you want. You can one zero matches is like so common. So these kids are just battle tested in these close matches where they're riding guys out by grabbing their shoelaces and you know whatever means necessary. Um, <laughs> and in Pennsylvania, kids are good on the mat because it's 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 allowed. Like if it's if it's a one zero match and the kid goes down and you ride him out, you're not probably getting hit for stalling. You know, it's just not like um and the pennsylvania kids by default are usually better on the mat so i think ohio does a disservice to their athletes because of the way they call stalling because you got to be good on the mat in college you have to um but yeah that's a huge that's the biggest difference you're talking about on your feet pennsylvania ohio pretty comparable but on the mat pennsylvania is like significantly better but did you and i'm curious if you remember this so logan was also talking about a dual meet in middle school you guys were on where it was team ohio versus team pennsylvania and you wrestled Oliver? Yeah. Is that the first time you wrestled him? The only time. Really? Only time. Yeah. Did he tell you what happened? He did. He, did. he said time. he was like shook. He'd never seen you lose like a match like that. He was like, had you ever heard of him before that or no? Kind of. Um, I kind of heard about his name. Um, I knew he was good. Um, so we grew up wrestling um, Nico Cortez, who was who Logan wrestled in that match. So we had a good team. We were in the finals and Pennsylvania just had this team. We're like, it's going to be a tough match. You know, like I think Logan beat Nico in that match. Did he, I don't know if he told you, but it was, one. if, if not, said. it was close. Um, and then I'm, you know, we were, we were, like I said, we were always like the two lightest weights, 70, 75, 75 and 80, like our whole <laughs> life. So that's like, 75 we were, and 80. like, I love it. The series 70, 75, 75, 80, 80, 85. Like that's just what we were. One of my partners, drill partners, we trained all the time together. He said you guys and, still were the two lightest weights. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I wrestled Jordan and zero, zero first period. I go down. He cross wrist turns me for three points. Um, third, third period. He takes top cross wrist me again. And these are like two, one, one periods. Right. So I'm down six, zero with, I don't know how much time left. I get off the bottom, take him down, cut him, take him down, cut him, stall call. Boom, boom, boom. Tied up six, six. Jordan takes injury time. Going into overtime, takes injury time. He like goes over there. He's like taking a drink of water. He's laying down on the mat. Takes me down in overtime, and I lose eight six. I was like, oh my gosh! So that I I was we used to go to every Pennsylvania tournament that we could possibly go to get try and wrestle Jordan again. Like we as in like my, I was like, Dad, we have to go to North Allegheny. We have to go to Easton. He's from Easton. We have to go to an Easton tournament. I gotta wrestle him. I never wrestled him again. Was he at, was, at the tournaments or he wasn't even there when you went there? No, it would always be rumor like, oh, Jordan's going to be there. I'm like, I'll be there. And I would wait. I'd be there. And I'd be, I'd wrestle two weight classes, two age groups, whatever I possibly could do to get me a, get a chance to wrestle Jordan again. But 
never did. So when you were in middle school, were you, would you say like Jeff Jordan was like your middle school coach too? Or like, did you move after middle school? I moved in sixth grade from Wyoming to Ohio. Um, you know, in Ohio, that's a big difference between Ohio and Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, like wrestling in middle school was a big deal in Ohio. We didn't, um, you know, we just traveled to the big tournaments. I'd wrestle, I don't know, 60 matches a year, but only yeah. the biggest tournaments basically. Like who's your so, club though? Like you go to practice at? Uh, so Jordan trained was our club, but they only did Sundays and Tuesdays. So, oh, wow. um, there, after that, we just wrestled like in the high school room. Mm. Um, so like I just wrestled in the high school room. So one of the guys I wrestled with, so I couldn't wrestle the high school kids when I was in junior high. You weren't allowed to do that. Right. But I was able to come in the high school room and wrestle, um, you know, other kids. So if it was Ben Jordan or, you know, Ben Jordan was like when he was a year older than me or another kid named Zach Toll wrestled up Missouri um ben jordan zach toll um you know logan would come down every once in a while like kyle dake would come in you know f- during like thanksgiving break um there's a few other kids that I'm, I'm missing out on uh that we would wrestle but basically any of those kids we would just wrestle but the, my main partner his name was daniel klodzik so he was he went to this private school in dayton they never wrestling team he was really smart both his parents were do- doctors oh, wow. and he went on to wrestle with princeton and I'm pretty sure he's an all American once, maybe twice. Um, Related but we, to Matthew Kladzik? Yeah, Matthew Kladzik's brother. Okay. Is Daniel. So when, but Daniel, because he didn't wrestle on a team, he just came to our practices and I would, I could wrestle Daniel. So we wrestled all the time. Like he was always a year older than me and like we wrestled all the time. Like we would just, he was a big partner of mine. I remember at one point I would basically be like wrestling in practice. And then Matthew's dad, Mr. Klodzik, would write down what we were doing in practice. And then that's what he taught to Matthew. So like what we were doing in practice and how we were wrestling, he would have a list of all that technique. And then he would then take that technique and teach it to Matthew. Wrestling guys are so crazy. (laughs) So crazy. Um, But yeah, so it was was intense. Like we were always wrestling. I mean, because that Graham room is like, so like that's a very intense high school room. So you're basically in middle school on the sides, kind of wrestling other middle school kids. But it's like a high pace in there, right? Yeah, it was insane. Like, you, you, you basically, this, you go in there, you walk around and do like some jog, whatever. You do like half fast drill for 10 minutes, and then you wrestle live. You just battle. You're just fighting each other. Like, whatever the goes were. It could be an hour ago. It could be 30-minute go. It could be 30-second goes, 15-second goes. And it was just intense. Um, it was intense. So I thought honestly. it was like heavy drilling. It wasn't heavy drilling. It was more just live. No, the camps were more drilling, but wrestling practice was live. We never drilled in practice. So what we did is wrestling was what? basically live in practice. And then if you wanted to drill, you came back. So, you know, three to five o'clock, wrestling live, like pretty much the entire time. <laughs> um, you go home, you eat dinner, and then you come back at night at seven o'clock. And that's when you would drill and cut weight, basically. Um, and oh, we had to come back eight. at night. Sorry, go ahead. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. So basically every single day. So Sunday, I go to club. Monday, practice. Finish practice, really hard practice, two hours. Um, finish practice, eat something, go back at seven o'clock, drill. Tuesday would be practice, go back to you know Team Jordan at night, Tuesday. Then Wednesday, Thursday, because we didn't have a traditional schedule. We only wrestled like the good dual meets and good teams. Um, but every day of the week was the practice and then go back at night and drill at seven o'clock. So with like a one hour break in between, basically. Sometimes it would be like, you basically had enough time to just like, eat your food as fast as you possibly can. And then you're on the road back to practice. So you basically go back to your house and then go back. That's it. I've never heard of any. So like yeah. when you're drilling, is it like drilling can be, you know, a harder workout than the wrestling itself. Or are you guys like breaking it down and going like play wrestling and kind of like sparring? It didn't exist. No, we literally just wrestled live. Like every single practice that we had was wrestling live. What about uh, the seven o'clock workout? Like that, that was drilling. Yeah, that was drilling, but it was basically like two minute blocks. So it'd be like, Two minutes, just drill stuff. Two minutes, drill your stuff. I mean, we had our system, you know, because like Coach Jordan had like, you know, the camp system, which is, you know, he has like his, it's, you know, for however 20 years, it's like you check in on Sunday, check out on Thursday, and, you know, you go through that system at the end of camp, you drill it. So by default, we all went to the camps all summer. So basically the idea was you get your technique in the summer at the camps, you wrestle with all the people that come in. And then during the year, you just wrestle. And we just, cut weight, wrestled hard and we're tough. And that was like the mentality basically. And like how, like knowing that 
you're part of that club, knowing how many guys come in in the summer, like how many different camps are you doing throughout the summer? Just constantly? Yeah. So we'd have like one camp a year that was like around me. So it'd be like, all right, the David Taylor hammer camp or like me and Logan's name are at the very top. Mm-hmm. And would have 40 names of like the best kids in the country coming in and be like David Taylor, 37 time national champion, right? Logan Seabird, 29 mm-hmm. time national champion. And then boom, 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 everyone that would come in. So it was like, we were always wrestling the best kids. That was one week of summer, but living there, basically once I was at a size where I could wrestle high school kids, you'd be like, Hey Taylor, we got a pretty good kid today. Come in and wrestle him at this place. Okay, cool. I come in and wrestle on Sunday. Hey, Hey, we got a pretty good kid here. Come wrestle him on Monday. Okay, come in. So, you know, we have two, three week, two, three camps going on a week. So every night at seven o'clock, you're going somewhere and wrestling that, and the night practice is always live. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from seven to nine, we're just live wrestling in the camps. So you just go show up at seven o'clock and you just wrestle. And a lot of times it's that same group of people that we would just, um, that we talked about that wrestle all the time. You know, if we, we would all still go to that seven o'clock practice and, you know, if there was nobody that we could wrestle, we just wrestle each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. How similar like, or different is like the Penn State system compared to that? It's polar opposite, pretty much. Really? I mean, I went from that type of what I thought that's what it took to be the best, you know, um, very kind of old school. And I think there was value in that. I mean, I, I think like you you have to tap into it, you know, to wrestle a practice like that, like you're never really going a hundred percent live because you can't, we did so much live. <clears throat> so you kind of learn how to survive, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of learn to be like, all right, well, I mean, I can get on top and that's how I got really good on top. You know, you're like, well, I get on top. It's gonna be a lot easier to do this one hour grind match. You know, if I get on top for 45 minutes, it's going to be a lot easier, you know? So you, you, it was kind of like, but it was intense, you know, coach Jordan, you know, he tapped into a different mentality, you know, and uh, I think that was important to have. And, but I do think I got to a point where it got kind of stagnant, you know, and um, it got, it just got hard for me to kind of continue to do it like that. So in the summers I would go maybe to a different place and train and get some different, menta- get different technique, come in and utilize that technique, you know, and all those partners that we had. Yeah. So I got to state, I just thought you should wrestle twice a day and that's, you just wrestle live all the time. And, you know, you actually had off days, you know, I never knew what an off day was before that. And, you know, it was a different, it was a change for a little bit. I remember my dad, I'm calling my dad. He's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, Oh, it's an off day. He goes, what do you mean? It's an off day. Get to practice. I'm like, no coach said it's an off day today. He's like, Hey, do you want to win? Get to practice. I'm like, well, no, coach said that we're off today. He's like, you obviously don't want to win, you know, basically. And and but is uh, Kale expecting to go for a run or go to the gym or he actually means off? Yeah, like off. Like it's like he's an off day. You know, I'd never had an off day in my life. And then I remember <laughs> the very first day, like this is an off day. I'm like, well, so I should, should I come in at tw- twice tomorrow? They're like, no. I'm like, all right. So one time tomorrow? They're like, no, you're not doing anything. I'm like, well, what am I going to do all day? I've never had an off day in my life. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. So I've been, my background is like, I've had both of them and I try and, you know, have a blend of that with my club, um, to an extent, I think it's value to do both. You know, I think you have to, you've never really like tapped into that type of mentality. You you do need that as a wrestler, but I think, you know, too much of that is such an old school wrestling approach. You know, so I've been, I've been, you know, grateful to be a part of two type very successful programs you know that do both and then kind of finding that middle ground you know so well just hearing yeah. logan talk about it kind of reminded me of how it used to be back then where like you're going to tulsa and these kids are cutting a lot of weight and like getting carried to scales i remember a kid literally getting carried to a scale yeah. and he was incentivized his dad's like hey if you make weight i will get you a yo-yo i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> Bro. if you win this tournament i'll get you a go-kart and the yeah. kids like doesn't want to wrestle. If you make this weight and you win this tournament, I'll get you a go kart. I remember that. I'm like, this dude's nuts, dude. It's crazy. When Logan was talking about like his dad would run these practices where it was like these random kids would come in, they'd leave crying. It was just like the intensity level in like Central Ohio back then was nuts. You guys were going hard. Well, you had the Palmers, right? Dwayne, Dwayne was intense, you know, and his sons were really good. The Adamsons, uh, Leroy Adamson, very intense. You know, and those are two families that Logan and I spent a lot of time with growing up, you know, because 
we were just part of this club that we'd wrestle. It was like the original OG all-star team. It was called the bad boys club. And it was just like you to get this single. It was like this black single with like gold writing to get this single. You had to be a beast. With and the you had to like, butt? yeah. And you had to like survive these crazy practices basically. And then you was like a rite of passage. Okay. You can be part of the bad boys. And I mean, we were nasty. Every, if you, we had 12 kids, 12 kids were winning. Um, I, I say crazy this, like that too. What was your dad crazy like like Mr. Steber was like these guys other other guys were or was he like more hands off? All the dads were crazy, but um, I'd like to say my dad was the most sane of all of them. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it takes I mean to do with you know it's just the the commitment that they all put in. I mean they were all a little crazy. I tell my dad now I'm like, dude, you're such a teddy bear. Like this is not like what it was like growing up. You know my girls have really softened them up, but. But my dad, I mean, just, uh, it was a lot of sacrifice, you know, and I talk about this because this was my background. This was my childhood, you know, growing up. It's not, I don't think this is what you need to do. Like definitely super important. Like, you know, dads are like, I told you that's what you got to do to be the best. You know, it's like, but it's not, it really isn't, you know, like at the M2 training center, this is not the way we do things. And we have some really good wrestlers, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can enjoy it. I don't think we grew up like enjoying wrestling. I think, we loved wrestling. I think, I don't think many of those people enjoyed any of that stuff, but Sounds you know, horrible. <laughs> it's what we thought you had to do to win. You know, it's like, man, if you're, you're looking around and you're like, this is what these kids are doing to win. I, I guess it's what you got to do, you know? And I don't think any of our dads probably knew any better. Mm -hmm. They're like, these kids are really good. Okay. Well, I remember like back then, you know, everybody was talking about being Olympic champion, you know, like, and if you were at that point, eight and under, you're like, yeah, every single one of these kids is going to be Olympic champion. Oh, my gosh, they're the best. They're killing everybody. <laughs> um, but, you know, it takes a toll. Every one of us got hurt in our lives. Every one of us got hurt, you know, and a lot of those guys got hurt younger. You know, I was fortunate. Logan, Logan and I were pretty fortunate to be really healthy. Um, I think that we got to the point where we were really dominant, so we didn't have to have that same grind that everyone else had to do. You know, like our grind was different than everyone else's grind because we could dominate people. And I think – if you train that way, you know, um, it just wasn't sustainable. And all those guys got hurt. Um, and it's tough. You know, I look back, you know, it, it was a, it was a, it was a, it's not the way to do it. It's, it's not crazy what it looks like. It's the way that we did it. It's um, I think about why that's changing. You know, I, I don't really know what's going on in the Penn state room, but it, you feel like what you guys are doing has a lot to do with it. Another guy who's really outspoken. I love his approach. And I know you work with him a little bit, Ben Askren, like what he's doing up there, man, those kids, they're churning out kids like crazy up there. And like the, the um, mindset's so refreshing. Do you get to sync with him at all on, on coaching philosophy? A little bit. He's always trying to get the Penn State secrets. I'm like, dude, I'm not giving them to you, man. Like you got it. <laughs> so um, he's doing it. Well, he's sending guys in who, who he coached now. Now it's now it's all bets are off. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate espionage approach. Totally. Uh, yeah. Trojan yeah. horse. No, I'm just giving. I'm, I'm kidding. But no, I, I think it's good. Like, I don't know what ben, ben did growing up as a kid, you know, but I remember watching Ben in college, you know, I was just a kid and he was different. He was unique. You could see that about him, you know, oh, yeah. and what he did is was so, so different. You could tell he was wired different. And I think to be successful, you know, at that level, you have to be wired differently. Like I, I am wired different, you know, um, Logan's wired different. And a lot of these kids that became really, really good down the road, like you have to have this kind of, you have to tap into something that's just different that people don't really have. Yeah. And everyone taps into it differently. You know, Ben, I could just see like tapping into disco or something and just yeah. like going out there and flopping around and getting on top. And, and then it came, and then it became like a system for him. Um, but now it's like, you know, we have this PNL league, the premier national league. And I feel that, you know, we were all, pretty successful as competitors and but I don't think any of us run any of our clubs anywhere like that or you wouldn't be in the league you know like if we thought that's like what it took to be in the league or to be successful with these kids like that's not what it is and we know that and we talk about that um I talk openly about it um because that was my background but I would never put any of our kids through anything like that I just don't believe it's the best way yeah. Um, you know, Ben doesn't believe it's the best way. Jared Lawrence doesn't believe it's the best way at Pinnacle, you know, like the best clubs, you know, that are sending out the best people um, have a different approach, you know, and 
there are clubs out there that are still insane, you know, and, you know, they prioritize winning Tulsa at six and under and running sprints if you don't pin everybody, but that's not going to get you to the end goal. You know, it's not, um, I think you got to be tough and there's ways that you can, you know, hopefully find a way to do that, but you know, it's a it, results driven success. Uh, it's a, it's a difficult thing to sustain. That's a heavy burden to carry too. You know, that's like, that's a lot of stress. Well, David, it's been, and every time I chat with you, man, it's just a lot of fun. And, you know, talking about current events, talking a little bit about, uh, it was just so fun to have Logan on and him bring up a couple of stories. Cause I would never even know to ask you about like that middle school duel, man. I get, I, and I just started to think about, it. I'm like, dude, team Ohio winning three weights in a row at Fargo. That's pretty insane. So they had me, uh, had me excited to chat today. So it was just random. I talked to him yesterday, but it's good to have you on brother. Yeah. Thanks. It was, uh, yeah, it was fun. I, I often think about growing up and, um, you know, my best friends were these kids I wrestled with all the time, you know, mm-hmm. you know, Logan and, you know, we didn't see each other all the time and cell phones didn't exist back then, but we just shared a common goal, common interests. And, you know, that was, that was our, I was our, our friend group, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's cool. It, it was, it's cool to see, you know, Logan and I survived all of it to the highest level, you know? Um, yeah. so we, we kind of, we share that we talk about it, you know, a lot. And I think both of our approaches are so different because of that, you know? Um, yeah. I think a lot of people didn't have that success and they think that's what it takes to have the success. Um, but you know, those are two guys that, went through that, had the success and, and think differently, you know? So I just think that's, uh, for wrestling, I think you can, you can be very successful in a lot of ways. Um, but you do have to enjoy it or you have to really love it. Um, and if you don't really love it, you're going to hate doing that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's like that kind of fine line. Well, that's what, that's what the cool thing is now is that it seems like there's a bigger focus on that versus just, just the soul sucking work and, and weight cutting which is not wrong with the, the work it's good but you know just the approach you guys are taking now all the coaches in the pnl and yeah you know, i hope that's spreading because i think it's a it's a lot more it'd be a lot more fun to do it that way you know yeah i think so i mean yeah i think it's, it's a good approach and moving forward bro it's a you got you're a big softy now too man you got goats out there you, you're living on a farm and dude i just want to say congrats on all that too it, that's cool to have a big big plot of land like that i love that you named him after a uh, uh, Cody and Kale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the goats are Kale and Cody. They're hilarious. They just do their own thing all day. Um, they just stick around our property, follow us around. My daughter, so I have two girls, London and Ivy. My youngest, Ivy, she's a beast. She just wrestles everything. She just wrestles the goats. She'll wrestle the pigs. She'll try and wrestle the cows. She wrestles her sister. She beats her sister up all the time. So she's gonna be. Um, we forced to reckon with here soon. Like, I don't know who else has two year old girls that are going to wrestle, but Ivy's coming in hot. Like she's, she she's pigs? Well, she wrestles anything. She's got zero fear. Yesterday she was sitting on top of my counter and we tell her all the time, get off the chairs. You're going to fall. She doesn't listen. Like whatever there's danger, she just runs at it. Like she's just doesn't really have that thing. So she's sitting here. I'm watching her slow motion. And she's falling. The chairs are splitting apart. And she's going to fall face first into this floor, like four foot drop. Like, this is bad. We're going to the hospital. She just like a monkey. She just like grabs this chair. She slides down it and doesn't hit the ground somehow. I'm like, how did you even do this? (laughs) And uh, then she just instantly gets up, goes over, tackles London, wrestling her. London's crying because she doesn't want to wrestle Ivy. So London's the older one? London's the older one, yeah. Yeah, She's real different in temperament? Yeah, she's just, she's a princess. She loves pink um that's she, awesome man it's not a thing in the house that she owns it's not pink if it's if it's if it's any color but pink it just instantly becomes ivy's oh wow like, it's just how she rolls like i was at the store the other day and they're like oh i need, I need a pitch for it because i need to you know get, clean up the poop and they're like well you probably don't want this pink one i'm like no i definitely want the pink one and they're like <laughs> really i'm like yeah well if it's any color that's not pink my daughter won't use it and she'll tell me return it so if I wanted to help me with the chores, then yeah, it definitely needs to be pink. So I <laughs> no, I definitely want the pink one. Yeah. Funny. Well, good stuff, man. You got a good, you got a good thing going out there and we can't wait to, uh, to get you out there competing again. I, I meant to ask you about that. We'll hit this next time, but how come golf and tennis can have four grand slam events and wrestling camp? What, are, what's golf and tennis doing? I'll leave that as a, something to think about for next time, but why can't we get four massive ones if possible? Those events have money. 
That's it. Uh, they is that it? it? Well, they make it worth your time. You know, in wrestling, it's just going and competing is just not worth the right. time to go do it. Once you get to a certain level, you know, it takes time to train and travel and compete and be away from your family. Right. You know, um, if you want the superstars, like no of those sports, you can get the superstars if they're asking you essentially do it for free. You know, with like, like, hey, there's a carrot in the road, world championships, Olympics, but you got to do all these things to get there. They wouldn't be doing it, mm -hmm. um, but they're doing it because it's a way to support their family. So I think like it does come down to that. You know, it's just like we got to have a sustainable model where people and also a, you can leave it with this one. The model needs to be sustainable for two reasons. One, um, it needs to not be tied to making a world or Olympic team. It needs to have like a system and plan that like these are tournaments that you compete. In. It's a way that, yeah, you compete, you test yourself. Um, it needs to be separate from the trials process. Okay. And it needs to have not have any tie to that as well. Um, and then also it's a way that you can en en enhance the sponsorship in wrestling. Because right now, if you're a person who wants to sponsor a wrestler, you're only getting, if you don't have a huge social media following, you're only getting a couple events. And the ones we have don't have big exposure. So you need you need the way to make it sustainable for people to 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 do it and mm -hmm. prioritize it in a way that you can enhance sponsorship, whether the events can sell sponsorships or the athletes can promote sponsorships. Those are the two avenues that uh, Ryan, if you can figure that out, then man, you got we'll be on to something. Good to know, man. Well, David Taylor, always good to catch up, brother. You have a great day, man, and have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, man.